Hi, besties. Thanks for joining today. I was going to say joining Giorgio and I today. Um, I am feeling a bit under the weather. Uh, so we are only, <laughs> I'm only doing one episode this week because, um, yeah, my, before I start sounding like uh, that voice, you know what I'm talking about? That like, oh, I'm not feeling well voice. Um, I'm not there yet, but we're getting close. So I'm the Meredith Marks this- Xanax voice. <laughs> Exactly. The, is... the nastiness. <laughs> no, it's, it's very nasally. It's very yeah. That was yeah. That was very Erica. Yeah, a little too Erica. Um, so I'm I'm just glad to be here. I'm glad to have Giorgio here. We're we're gonna make it kind of a a lighter episode because um, one like I said, I am not feeling my uh, my usual self, and I have a toddler who decided to bring the gift of a uh, viral viruses home from his soccer class it has hit everyone and um yeah i i mean and let me tell you yesterday i had just started feeling the sore throat and i complete like not enough to where it was like oh you know maybe anything more than oh it's a little dry because colorado is extremely dry as it is so it that happens quite often and like right before it was really kind of starting to hit me i realized I forgot I had booked one of my cult classes, Orange Theory. So I went and hauled ass over there. It lit, I mean, I, I think I'm, I'm, you know, it's not like I was, don't worry, friends. I also, I took COVID tests, everything. I am a pandemic unicorn. Okay. So I'm going to knock on wood as I say that, but all of that is negative. I just, um, whatever this is, it is. Um, so I went to my own corner in the class and died. Um, Anyhow, Giorgio, thank you for being here with me today. <laughs> oh, you know, if it was anybody else, I would have canceled because I was <laughs> I I already told you how I'm doing. I am, and you can probably hear my voice. Exactly. I am so exhausted from everything. Mm-hmm. I am so happy to be busy. Let me just say mm-hmm. that. But with that, I've done way too much, as I said mm-hmm. to you before we got on. And um it's about scaling back a little bit and, you know, not keeping the foot on the gas as much as I like to do that sometimes. It's not healthy. No. Um, and you know what else, too? I think it's because the fall, whenever it starts to ch- get over that hump where the days are getting darker earlier, slowly but surely it creeps up on you. You're just kind of like, oh, my gosh it's it's fun but it's like okay now it's going to be dark at 4 30 every day and you have to like reason with that mentally so you're just you know agreed agreed um yeah it's something about like also you know when the school year starts i think that's all where more things get passed around and we know especially where you and i live that eventually we're going to be stuck inside a bit more and I, listen, I'm a bitch who loves a glass of wine on a patio, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, it, that's, I, I'm just saying. it's So it's tough transitioning from that time. Um, yeah, and I, I used to be that person that was like, oh, I would fall under the weather maybe once every four years. <laughs> and now <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Wow. Um, I'm so glad my child is building up his immune system, but um, apparently mine wasn't built up enough as it is. No. Just one of those things. Um, Okay, so let's just start with a few things here. We got the Beverly Hills and the uh, Real Housewives of Miami trailers this week. The Beverly Hills, hmm, okay. I'm going to go ahead and just share my thoughts brief thoughts I have on it. There are some things that I am excited about just, you know, I, getting a fresh new face it looks like on there. And I truly believe that most of the drama is going to be in the like final episode in the finale and maybe the reunion. I from hearing what Erica Jane has said about it, I have and now I'm always going to go into everything with like the highest hopes. I'm not going to be dooming anything before I've seen it, you know. Uh, but I'm a little like, hmm. but I didn't even notice that Rena was not in the trailer. Didn't miss her. Didn't need her. 
Isn't that funny how the, you know, I mean, obviously we knew that they were going to build the trailer around this Kyle and Mo situation for as long as they've been mm-hmm. talking about it, they better have. But there were some parts in there that seemed like things were actually happening through the season. So yeah, there yeah. was some of the fallout that we, we saw in the trailer that you could tell. Like, I think that scene where Kyle's crying, mm-hmm. I think is post filming the season where they picked back up. Mm-hmm. But like the part where Mo's like, I don't want to talk about this right now. And she like storms off. That happened in the middle of the season. Oh, yeah. So oh, like, yeah. that's where it's like, oh, wait, then is this your way? So I I want to reason with it too. Like, is this her way of like getting, I don't know. It's just the mm-hmm. way she's handling this all is not a very Kyle move. No. And she very publicly today picked up morgan wade from lax I saw that like of all the airports first of all like now i don't know where morgan was flying in from but if you're flying to los angeles and your first choice is not to fly in or out of burbank you need to reevaluate some things because it does not cost more it just has fewer flights is the only thing i uh, that because you will see more celebrities in my opinion at burbank than you will at lax because it's so much smaller and easier to get through like you they don't even have no they do they do have like the clear line but you don't even need it like going through security it's so easy i uh, now did you see the headline that daily mail put on it whatever they posted they put up yes the picture. they are so dramatic <gasps> i was like oh could my you imagine God. as the kids watch the like it's so i like come on whoever wrote that was laughing hysterically when they posted because there was no way that you yeah. like come on the headline said like kyle richards picks up rumored <laughs> lesbian lover as kids are seen sobbing in new beverly hills trailer like oh my god like they have zero chill <laughs> Zero. But like, just think about it though. They're saying that as if Kyle sat on the couch with them, watched them watch this whole thing play out on a trailer, and then was like, "All right, guys, I gotta go pick up more again. Bye." Gotta go and pick like, up my lesbian lover. Also, like, I question a lot of things now, seeing that Morgan is played into this whole thing on the show, because it's like, I knew she'd be featured on the show. I just didn't think it was going to be so blatant like that, where it's like, they are showing her tattooing Morgan with, you know, Kay right. and Dorit being like, what is going on? Like, and, and Morgan being like, when they asked her, you know, how did you guys meet? She stalked me on Instagram. She stalked me. I'm sorry, Morgan's voice is not what I expect. It doesn't sound anything like how she would be. You would expect to me. it all. <clears throat> it's almost now like listen, someone else is voicing her. I y'all, I have a confession to make. I like her. I like Morgan's music. I do. It's I haven't like, really listened to it all too much, other than the song that she just put out with Kyle being the like sex vixen in the video. Right. Because again, like that was just so bizarre. Still, to me, it was very bizarre. Um, but no, her music is good because it's got more of a rock feel to it with the country, so it's not so twangy. Does that make sense? And mm-hmm. I'm allowed to say all of that. Being from Oklahoma, I have listened to my fair share of country music. Okay, let me just say that. Um, but you know, the look on Mauricio's face whenever, and a lot of people pointed this out, so I'm certainly not reinventing the wheel here. Uh, When Kyle said to Mauricio, at least it's me for once regarding the affair rumors. And Mauricio just kind of is like, (laughs) bruh, like, I don't know, man. I just, I'm so like, why is it that they very much want us to believe that People Magazine, of all the publications, got it completely wrong on their separation? They didn't say they were divorced. They said they were separated. And yes. my, I think the best part of all of it, though, I appreciated that short snippet of Erica talking with Kyle. Excuse me. My throat feels a lot worse than it sounds, so sometimes I get a little caught up here. 
when Erica is saying to Kyle after Kyle tells her, there are people, strangers on the internet saying, you made us, you guys made us believe in love, and now we don't believe in love now that you and Mauricio are separating. And Erica says to her, no, no, they, they can still believe in love. That, that This has nothing to do with them. This has to nothing. do with you and Mauricio. And I felt like Erica was kind of the perfect person to be talking to her in that moment, oddly enough. Um, Agreed. Not, yeah, not that Erica had the fairy tale love story going um, before everything that happened. With no, Tom. but she surely knows about people having an opinion about her marriage, nonetheless. So, yeah, I would Facts. have sat and talked to Erica over anybody else, too. Mm hmm. And I think, you know, Erica's the one that's going to have your back and also tell you, bitch, get your get your ass up and be strong she's gonna yeah she'll be the one that's like no come over or we're gonna go out we're gonna you're not gonna just sit there so yeah no mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um you know i think it's interesting now that we don't have that fox force five the way the dynamics are going to shift because it's going to become every man every woman for themselves and that's mm -hmm. what we've been wanting on beverly hills and what we've needed the alliances need to be broken up okay mm -hmm. they just do um the Miami trailer listen Miami I just love Miami so much I love so what good. they're doing with it I love everything and I don't need Miami's another kind of like Salt Lake City Miami is kind of our take take me away let the women bond they I don't need all of them to be at each other's throats all the time I know that might be I don't know compared to some of the other shows or franchises, I should say. But I, I love to see them bond, and I loved their bond over basically hating men last year. <laughs> and it looked, I mean, I was watching it while you were sitting here for a moment, and you and I both were cracking up at that moment where Lisa's, like, yelling at Kiki, I, it's about me loving animals. Like, I, were they going on, like, a crocodile hunt or something? Like, what was I that? don't know, but there was a mariachi band, too. And then all of a sudden, Gertie's, like, crying, and then other people are crying, and then Alexia's crying, and they're all, like, yelling in the background still while the people are crying. It's just like, this is Miami. This is what I love, though. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. are chaotic, and then they move on. Yes. Yes. That's, that's like the old New York was that way. Chaos. Yes. And they, they could be like, fuck your mother, and then they're fine. That's what, like... You say something like that on Beverly Hills, forget it. They're talking about it for 10 years, okay? <laughs> like, or if something, one fight like that happens, like the Kiki and Lisa fight, that would have been, that would have been the whole season storyline. Exactly. It is just a totally different dynamic. The women on Beverly Hills, they just so desperately, they're, I would say with the exception of Erica, and, um, well, the exception of formerly Lisa, Rena, they all are worried about being liked because the atmosphere there in that, you know, Los Angeles area, it's a lot of give kiss on the cheek and then go talk shit. Um, mm -hmm. because it's all about appearances in a different yeah. way than it's about appearances in a lot of these other franchises. Like, yes, it's, you know, about appearance, but not, um, they don't, it's not they don't the have same. to be liked. Well, especially for like a Rinna who's been in the Hollywood game, she also mm -hmm. is thinking about it from that side of it too. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> um uh oh, don't you start doing that shit now too. I know, I was just thinking about that. Uh, um, okay, so Tom Sandoval was revealed as being the scuba diver on the map. Is everyone Sandoval. shocked? Shocked. Shocked. So shocking. Uh, so very shocking. Um should we chit chat a little bit about this reunion with Orange County? Because I feel like, uh, and this is something else I just kind of want to preface. I, while y'all know I can get down, dirty, and overly in depth with uh, recapping in general, and while this week I very much made a clear, not feeling my best, but I'm doing my best. You know what I'm saying? Um, I the the things I want to focus on mostly with the reunions when I'm recapping those in particular from now on is we, we all are rehashing with them the exact same shit. I'm just going to focus more on things that we didn't know during the season and that maybe get revealed is basically where I'm going with this. Okay. Um, you and I talked about this, how much we loved that backdrop that they're doing now. Um, 
Andy was like so thrilled to be showing that it was like Willy Wonka bringing everyone up to the chocolate factory for the first time when he had that up. I mean, it was like <laughs> that. Do you know what though? That is a really good example of how Housewives is very much like Hunger Games. <laughs> what? What's the? What was the guy's now? Oh, I forgot the name. What's his name? He is so Andy. You know it. People Stanley are saying, him, yes, oh my God. Stan, first of all, shout out to Stanley Tucci, who is uh-huh. the chicest, if I may, Dorit, the chicest <laughs> actor, public figure, whatever you want to call him. He is so talented and he's a, apparently a good cook. He's like, chic, chic, chic. I just, I love that, now I'm, a, I'm slightly fearful to even say this out loud, but I love that uh, we haven't seen him become problematic. Oh, no, so don't say that now. I Something's going to come out from like 1989 when he was an intern. Oh, my God. I don't remember this being the name of his character. That is Caesar Flickerman. Oh, I, yep, that was his name. I read those books a, a very long time ago. I don't remember that being thing. Yeah, but I was watching it, and as soon as those screens went up, I was like, wow. How, could you imagine actually sitting there, feeling the heat from those screens and the live, like, video of the beach and the, like, birds? That's yeah. wild. I wonder if, like, they got slight motion sickness. It kind of reminds me of this. It may, Well, it made me think of um, what they now have in Vegas, that dome thing. But in Oklahoma, we had this thing called the Omniplex. Um, And it was the Kirkpatrick Science Museum, I believe, such a long time ago. And there was this dome that they would play like scientific movies and films on. And you would lay back in your seat a little bit and the entire dome, like if they were showing a preview for someone going skydiving, you felt like you were skydiving because it was everywhere around you. And that's kind of what it reminded me of a little bit. And so I'm like, I wonder if they got motion sickness or anything. Is that? (laughs) I just thought of that, actually. I don't know. That might make me feel nauseous after a while. I don't know. Yeah, Yeah, the constant movement. Because it would almost feel like you're on a boat, I would think. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, and the environment was set up that they had to, like, walk through the sand. So they, like, really went in on this budget for this, like, set. I can't imagine how much that must have cost. Do not make me walk my brand new possibly borrowed designer shoes through the fucking sand i would have been so pissed i that's where i would have had a diva moment i wouldn't have made anyone carry me i would have walked across it but i would have bitched the whole time (laughs) oh no i would have asked someone to carry me i would have asked one of those i am not doing that you should have told me ahead of time that i was gonna have to walk through sand like no no, and you're all oiled up and shit, and then you're gonna have your fucking sand all over your like oiled legs and yeah. ankles. No, you're carrying someone. Come pick me up now. I would be that <laughs> way. I don't care. You'd Ariana Grande it. I would pick me up. I don't want to walk on that. Uh uh-uh. uh Um. So we did find out though that Emily lost forty pounds. Holy moly! Can That's I just point weight. something out though? Yeah. Is it me? And I don't mean, and I mean this wholeheartedly. She looks phenomenal. And I sure. interacted with her on social about it. Like, I, I think that's so great. And I do attribute a lot of that to her working out. Um, I know a lot of people want to say that she's not been fully honest with all the work, but I feel like she has. I think she has um, too. She posts quite a bit that she's in the gym and those legs don't get toned off of Ozempic or Lipo or any of that. That's strictly... Yeah working it out so good for her i i do feel though that now her face seems aged that's, do you know what happens. i'm trying to say that happens a lot for women the loss of fat volume in our face that is one of our quickest ways that our our aging shows so that's why like women i always tell people this like especially my friends my friend tessa she's always like i hate how full my face she's like you know, she says, my cheeks are too fat. And I'm like, no, that makes you look more youthful. 
because people like Christy Brinkley, you know how she looks eternally youthful. It's because her face is full and that is attributed to youth. And so when you lose some of the fat in your face, because women, the first place, y'all know what I'm talking about. You start losing weight. Where do you lose it first? Your boobs and then your face immediately. Okay. That's exactly where we all get it immediately. And so, um, that's when women who are thinner start doing the fillers and start adding volume to their face. Like for example, you notice how Heather is so thin, but somehow she has a little bit of that volume just right through her cheeks. She still has very high cheekbones, but her face should be sharper. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, so that's, that's what it is. It's the loss of fat in the face. I think that keeps young people. I see that, but I'm more talking about her eyes. Her eyes look really tired more so she than She had surgery. That... She had a blepharoplasty. Oh, okay. Is it still healing or? That's um, a lifting of the lid. Or maybe, now maybe it was during, maybe she hadn't had it done yet at the reunion. I'm not sure. Um, actually, you know what? I don't think she had, ju- she hadn't done it yet at the reunion. I think she did it not long ago though. It it was pretty recent. Oh, okay. So then mm-hmm. it's okay. I'm just I, that's the only thing I saw. I was like, wow, why does she look so tired in her eyes all of a sudden? It wasn't even the face because she has a full face naturally. Well, but there's fat underneath your eyes is fat too. That's true. Mm-hmm. Well, she looked great nonetheless. I liked that dress she that she was wearing. <clears throat> I think she looked great as well. Um, you might be surprised. I actually really like Gina's dress. Um, a lot. I was like, okay, Gina finally. It was very something. Gina. Yeah, no, it was very much her. It was extremely expensive. <laughs> um, probably, what's the brand? Um, oh, starts with a, a Daniel Como. Was it Daniel Como? Trying to remember. I'm I sure it she borrowed it. I don't think she. Yeah, I'm just, I'm surprised when I see Gina wearing a dress over $1,000 and I see Taylor come out wearing a dress from uh, Revolve that's under $200, which I I applaud something like that. If you want to know the truth, I don't, this is OC. It's not New York. New York, you wear the designer shit. Okay. I need that on you girls, but you know, OC make it slightly more attainable. I know that might be weird of me to say, but no, I think it's just the environment doesn't suit a like, I don't know. I just find it. Yeah. Like Taylor's vibe was what I would expect or like Mm -hmm. Tamara or Mm -hmm. Gina. Like this is the Zazzle I would want to see when I'm out in OC on a night out. Shannon, I don't know what it is about reunions, but God, God bless. She, she, <clears throat> there are some people who never miss and Shannon whiffs it every time when it comes to reunions. You know what it is? She always, it's like right around reunion time, she goes through Instagram and she finds like any like gay fashion boy that she can find because this year is going to be the year. And they always set her up and put like three different looks from three different like occasions at the same time. Like today, like if she would have just worn the dress and did her hair not like that, it probably would have been a lot better. And I would have almost probably applauded her for taking the step outside the box because she's not typically someone that likes the hair's fits. too much with the mesh. It no was curls just like, with mesh. What, did you just come out? Like, are you Ariel's long lost aunt? You just got swimmed up like. It was not. It wasn't it. Wasn't it? Um, I'm jumping ahead. We're gonna go back some, but I well on the subject of Shannon, how much did you go? Oh fuck! When she could not name Gina's kids. <laughs> oh, that was foul. And you know what's funny? She was just. She knew she didn't know all the names too, because she was like, uh, Simon. Now I'm drawing a blank. You didn't know them kids' names to save your life. You knew it. Oh. Let me tell you something, though, from the trailer, the trailer for the reunion. They did not do Gina justice because when you watch it back, you're like, Gina ate her ass off. <laughs> she did. She did. She did. She did. I don't opt for Gina that much, but this time I was like, oh, right nope. <laughs> well deserved, my dear. You ate her up. You threw the kitchen sink at her ass. Listen, I the way and it was the way she did it that it was yes 
now I gotta be like, all right, Gina, yeah, you did eat her up. Like I was, which now that uh, Shannon, don't don't have me agreeing with with Gina. I almost said Gina. Oh my god, <laughs> it's a combo of their names. Um, you know, Shannon is very lucky that this was filmed a week and three days before that DUI. That's all I will say about this. That's it. She, you know what I mean if you know, but you that's and all I, I'm gonna say. I messaged you the second I saw it and you went, oh, fuck. And you said the exact same thing I was typing out to you. <laughs> uh, thank God they already filmed the reunion. And you meant like, thank God for her. She's lucky. Yes. <laughs> Could you imagine what Yo. this reunion would have been had this DUI thing happened day, uh, even days before? There would have been a sit down. Uh, there might still be a sit down. Oh. So I was Do like, you, think you are, Shannon you know, she's like. <laughs> yeah, except do you think she's going to come to BravoCon? I was thinking about that. I don't know. How could she? That's kind of wild if you did. Unless you know, I whoop it up out. with everybody. Like yeah. after that, you just drove into someone's house. I mean, unless I were missing out on a, an incredibly large sum of money, I think I would be like, I got to stay home. How much are they paying you to go to BravoCon in the scheme of things and versus how it will look if you went to BravoCon in the long term? I'm just how saying. How much they're Shannon. charging. They better be fucking paying them a shit ton at this point. They probably are. They probably are. Yeah. Their paid appearance fees are all probably different, but. Yeah. Yeah. I can't imagine. I, that would be, no, that would be too uncomfortable. <clears throat> um, You know, do you think that Emily and Tamara's new friendship, do you think it's more of an alliance for the show or do you think it's a real friendship? So I think at first it was probably an alliance, at least on Emily's part. I don't necessarily mm -hmm. think it was on Tamara's part because I think Tamara, like, to be fair, can handle her own. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I think what I've learned from Emily this season is that I think she, although knows that this is not like your real group of girlfriends, mm -hmm. she does seem like someone or she's displayed at least that when she spends an exorbitant amount of time with you nonetheless she's going to take the time to try to find something about you that she cares about and wants to like respect mm -hmm. you for and so i think that's kind of what it's blossomed into with tamra i think tamra also knows emily will like shake her out if she needs to and so i think yeah. it does benefit them to be friends i don't think that's why they're friends but i think it benefits mm -hmm. them because they're both very opinionated and i can see this working beautifully together yeah i think they have a, um i don't think that they are going to ever be the best of friends she's not going to be the quattro amiga or i don't know replace and become a, a trace amiga but i think that they have a certain healthy respect for each other now that emily has shown bitch don't fuck with me <laughs> tamra because yeah and and it, it goes to show that you know i think for tamra to really take to anyone she needs to have a certain type of respect for them you know um and well that mm. no i was just gonna say really quick emily also was the only one to really stand up to heather Mm -hmm. Like for real, f stand up to her, over not like over. just for like a scene. You know, yeah. like, did you stand up for me two years ago when she said that? You did it. I'm done with you. Like, it wasn't like that. It's like Emily was right. calling her out on stuff. And I think Tamara was like, oh, okay. You're not, you're not scared. Like, you can, mm -hmm. you can stand up to anybody. That's good. And I, yeah. I, I respect that about her I mean, as well. Listen, let's not forget when she, went told kelly dodd she was gonna kick her ass i mean listen kelly dodd's someone that needs to be told that a few times um i'm not saying anyone go kick anyone's ass mm -mm. but um you know a healthy little i'm gonna kick your ass thing um which a by little the way reminder you, helps yeah did you watch this uncensored on peacock yes i watched oh it God. last i watched it last night but then i know now they do the uncensored because they know people love it I don't know what it is. It's just hearing Heather say the f word fuck and like not be bleeped out. Something classy about the bleep on her. Like she could cuss. Like when she like told Taylor, 
fuck you. Like in the way they just, they clipped the bleep in just nicely. Like it wasn't like a long drawn out bleep. Mm -hmm. But then you hear it back and when they played it back and she says it, I'm like, oh my God, it sounds so dirty now when you say it. Like, oh my God. It's like, I don't know. It's not like hearing. I don't know why I get so geeked out when I actually hear people that are on these shows actually say the word fuck or shit or like any of them really. Because it's always bleeped it's... out. So you're just like, what does it sound like when you say fuck? I want to hear it. It's like hearing a teacher cuss. Uh, yes. Or, you know? Yes. <laughs> it's like you don't know them well enough like it would be hearing your mom or your aunt or anyone like that. But it's it's like hearing a teacher cuss. It's like, oh, okay. Didn't know you went down like that. All right. Well, damn. <laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so here was the other thing, too. We get more and more of the Jen and Ryan of it, right? And I think what Jen is failing to see that Tamara finally, and I don't know why Tamara, Tamara let it drag on throughout the season a little more than she actually needed to by not going ahead and saying, Jen, this is less about you than it is about you calling me a liar by saying I am lying about this shit. Yeah. Um, That's, that took a long time to get to. <laughs> <laughs> no shit, right? Um, because the thing was the timeline of it, right? I know in Jen, it's like, I, I know my timeline doesn't make sense for everyone. So just to get it straight, Ryan goes to Cabo with Tamara and Eddie. He tells them he's having an affair with Jen. Jen mm -hmm. then is like, well, no, nothing physical was happening. Ryan, from what I understood, said there was something physical happening. Then Tamara was not friends with Ryan, didn't like him anymore because he cheated on Jen while they mm -hmm. were on a break, but they were on a break. And then Jen says Tamara brought her onto the show as her friend. And Tamara's like, I didn't bring you on as my friend, which is, I mean, I, I don't know that it works that succinctly like that. But she also says that they were barely, that she and Tamara and Jen were barely speaking when the show started. And then this is another thing that I'm just kind of like, okay, because the, they end up reading the messages because Tamara brought receipts out loud that Ryan sent to this woman. Man, I'm telling you one thing right the fuck now. <sighs> I know that Jen already knew about them, but let me mm -hmm. just tell you, now you're reading these out loud on the reunion stage when this didn't play up on the season. I would go not be mad at them. I would have to go home and lay into Ryan again because here it is. Yep, you want me to move on from it. But unfortunately, it's been the topic of my first season on this show. And even at the reunion, now I've got to relive these text messages you sent while I was at a concert with you. Could you flipping it, imagine? There is nothing. I don't give a fuck if we were on a break. I would <laughs> vanilla sky the shit out of him. I would. Do you hear me, Jeff? I would <laughs> vanilla sky you. I would pretend like everything's fine. We would get in the car and then all of a sudden it would all go fucking dark. That is what would happen. I wouldn't be on a reunion stage being like, okay, we have to let it go. Uh -uh. I couldn't. I just couldn't. No. Publicly now I look like a fucking clown. Homicide. Homicide. is Snapped. Exactly that show homicide. snapped. Yes. I would smile I in my mug shot too. I don't care. Yes, honey, put a camera in my face and I'm going to smile. Don't, don't even play like that. Okay. And you know what? It'll be, you'll be on the cover of people whenever you're giving all your interviews to help pay for those attorneys. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah, because the message he sent to this woman was, if I wasn't <laughs> driving home from San Diego, I'd have you meet me at my house naked. Yo, what the actual fuck? But um, he didn't sleep with her. Right. Okay. God. He's so That was one up. time. It's one time. One I already time. know about that. I was with him. Because, yeah, we know men only like to do it one time. Fucking, I. Oh. <laughs> what a shit friend you've been. Um, Rewatching. This is something that I noticed too. Um, when we're getting the whole my limp dick misses, like oh my god, enough with the dick pic shit, right? Well, That's so gross. Thank you, Tamara, for hopping on her though. Whenever she was saying, yeah, um, and Emily too, they both did mm -hmm. that. 
I, I'm sorry, that Jen said on Instagram, I guess, that he sent the limp dick pic to her when she was at home not feeling well. Then she says on the stage there, he was, we were getting ready for a night out and he was showering. None of this fucking made sense to me anymore, okay? I'm but gonna- on the show, she said she was on a plane. Exactly, and that's what Tamara points out. Now, did you notice when Jen was retelling, telling that story in the flashback, Jen says that they were on a plane to Vegas and that she looks down at her phone and goes, oh, ha ha, very funny. And that that's when his face drained of color and went, oh shit, because he didn't fucking mean to send it to Jen. Mm-hmm. No, of course not. <clears throat> Why Maybe would he need I to just, send it I to her miss- if she's in the other room? Next to him on the airplane. Remember, this This is this is the version where they were on the airplane. The, again, and let me repeat myself if I was not clear. If you are with your partner, they don't need to send you a dick picture. No. They don't. You know why? I'll tell you why. Because if you really want to see it, you can take them in the bathroom somewhere, unzip yeah. those pants, and take a real life look at it. You don't need to look at a pixelated picture of it that was taken. So, Lynn. yes, if I received a dick picture from my partner while I was in the same room or wherever we were, I would my I would turn into a beast. Mm-hmm. Um, same because I'd be like, and who the fuck? Who did you really want to send this to? Obviously starts with a G. <laughs> At least we know you are consistent with your alphabet. Oh, oh I'm so sorry. I have to point out that I am like my headphone cord keeps bopping the microphone. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to edit all of that out. Um, so again, it's, uh, <laughs> When Jen was trying to eat Tamara up and it didn't totally work and Tamara didn't totally eat her up, it was just a little bit of a, like, why are we calling each other names? I'm sorry. I don't recall Tamara being a cheater. As she was separated from Simon whenever she met Eddie. Was it I know. Quick why after? did that come yeah. up again, I don't know. though? That's such an know. old thing, and they cleaned that. They clarified that already. Mm-hmm. I don't know why we're going back. Um, I think my biggest takeaway is that when Andy asked Jen how she feels about Ryan's denim jackets, she actually had the full audacity after this is, I mean, listen, this is the full clown moment. I love him and he rocks it and he owns it. Ma'am, no one rocks or owns those jackets. Maybe Brianna is the only person I would allow. Where? No, she doesn't wear that shit anymore. Where is he buying this stuff? Where is this? Where? Where? No, there's no Ed Hardy stores. Ryan, where are you ordering these clothes? Because you're not buying that in Orange County. You're not. They don't sell that there. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't care. And you know what? Let me tell you what's going on with Jen. Jen hasn't been dicked down in her life before. And she's getting herself dicked the fuck down. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. ladies, gentlemen, some of you. You know what I'm talking about? There, it makes you stir crazy. It's like, this isn't good for me, but it is. Mm. And then you start making these decisions and red flags are popping up. And you're like, it's more of a pink flag. Um, you know, like that's mm-hmm. damaging. And the thing is, I agree. And I'm glad people pointed this out. Like, I think it was Emily. You're such a good person. Like, I love Jen's story. I do. Same. I said this from the beginning when she, I think it was episode two where they opened up her doors and let us see that she was a foster mom and she fostered pretty much anything that had a heartbeat. Yes. That hits my soul on so many different levels. I can't even tell you. Like, I feel like I could sit with Jen and cry for hours and we would be she's best of friends. Kind. Yeah. She's, she's so kind. sweet. And she would let you, I feel like she's someone also that would pick up the phone at any hour and, and like, listen yes. to you, yes. you know? Yes. And, but, I say that to say I want Jen to obviously come back because I think she did an excellent job for her first year navigating this. But I do want her to cut Ryan loose. I hope next season that they come in, they're like, so me and Ryan are done. Like, that's what I'm praying for because it's not, I'm not trying to shit on Ryan, but he's not the guy for her. Everyone knows it. Everyone that's the thing is it's not and and when she tried to point out to Emily about like oh well if I say to you I 
think all these things of you that I, I think so highly of you. And then you say, and then I say to you, well, I don't think Shane's a good guy for you. Well, honestly, I feel the kind of the same way about Shane. I've seen Shane be a complete and total twat to Emily. And I don't like that. That being said, but is he sending limp dick pictures to that's other friends of hers or sleeping with mutual mm-hmm. friends? Like and that's where I would draw the line. Yeah, he's an asshole sometimes, and yeah, whatever. I would even take the lying a little bit before I took the other stuff that has come out about him and the stuff that he's done, honestly. And even the lying, I'd probably have to be like, yeah, you better watch it. It just do it again. I just don't think Jen realizes exactly how beautiful and how much of the total package she is. Like, Honey, just because you have five children and you're divorced does not mean that you are not someone worthy of more. You know, I I think that's it's a sad thing that kind of seems to happen quite a bit with, um, you know, women in that aspect. This is what but, happens when you make decisions when you're not ready to. She, she shouldn't have gotten married. She shouldn't have had a family when she did because she wasn't ready. She hadn't experienced enough with relationships, I think. Mm-mm. No, I agree. Um. Oh my God, that moment. Sorry. So first of all, Heather was not just asking where, let me backtrack. How funny <laughs> that everything about Bravo, like all roads truly lead to Bravo. Oklahoma. Yeah. Um. First of all, m- my son's father was in a movie with Eric Roberts and then the Oklahoma of it all. Um. Okay. Heather was- I thought you were going to tell me he's in that movie with Taylor and I was going to shit myself. First of all, I, if you were in that movie with Taylor, I would have been like, I will be on that set in five minutes. Sweetie, I would be first flight out. Where is the movie? I'm here, Caitlin. <laughs> Enough! <laughs> I would have run. Okay, I wouldn't have walked, I would have run. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Heather was supposedly only asking where Oklahoma was, like, she gave where? Her, her acting example, not where's Oklahoma, where's Oklahoma? Well, Heather, it's, I'll put a map up here on YouTube. It's kind of, you know, northeast of Texas, just below Kansas, literally oh. like right in the middle of the U.S., kind of south though. Okay? Okay. It's not in Costa Rica. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. Okay. No. Um, it's not walking distance either, because if you also don't know where San Diego is in comparison to where you are, I'm okay. Um, so moving forward here, because I feel like a lot of this was a lot of rehashing the exact same stuff. Um, you know, we, we brought back up, we brought up skirt gate with Gina and Shannon, (laughs) And I guess everyone agrees that they were all making a joke of it, except for Gina doesn't think that Shannon was making a joke of it. But I Mm-mm. didn't think it was funny when Gina did that. If you want to know the truth, I, do- I didn't. No, I thought it. it was such a like, it was so like such a. It was a low blow type of thing. It was just. Not, I don't know if it was a low blow, but it was like, it's like you took the bait, Gina. Why did you do this? Like, that's so not. That's kind of what should've... I mean. It was it was Call. a low it was very, hanging like, fruit. It's... That's that's the phrase I wanted. Low hanging fruit. Okay, um, it wasn't. It just wasn't it. Um, yeah, she just needed to wait a few more weeks. Apparently, I'm just joking. I'm oh joking, uh, guys. I know. Yeah, no one get mad at Giorgio. That's not what we're here to do. No, I know the Shannon stuff's been sensitive ever since I posted that car of like me in the car hitting the house and keep driving thing. It's been. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, what a horrible thing for you to do, Giorgio. You I know. To be hitting something with a car. And then driving um, off. Right. Cracked me the fuck up. I got to be honest. Like we said, when Gina literally ate Shannon for lunch and then all Shannon has to say back to her is, okay, keep screaming, Gina. And I fully believe that is exactly how Shannon fights. I love Shannon to death, but I fully believe that is how she fights with people is, Oh, okay. We'll keep yelling. Keep yelling. Yeah. No, okay. that's how Shannon fights when she knows she's wrong and she has no mm-hmm. comeback because she didn't say anything back. She just kept being, okay, Gina. Okay. And she's like, <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness. You don't even Poor know Heather. any names. Heather was even like, Gina, Jesus Christ, we're on the OC. 
Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> um, I, I mean, listen, I guess. Get me <laughs> off this fucking show. Okay. Now, I think that's hysterical. The chances that Heather ran into the casting director of her show from 1999 and she said, get me off this fucking show. God, <laughs> I do not think she was seriously saying to get her off the show, but she was also like, please let me be an actor again. Let me prove to these bitches. I just had this whole vision when they said that, that she was like flustered in the bathroom, powdering her nose and then sees the like producer come out of the stall. And she's like, oh, Dan, who are you? Get me off this fucking show. What do you got? I will look at it. You know, like I just pictured her being like, so, and like, I, I what's funny it. though, she admitted, she admitted it at least. She was like, yeah, yeah. I did say that. I did say that. She did. <laughs> Someone must have fully heard her. I mean, it must have been like full on <laughs> because that, I was shocked about that too. I don't know what it was. Like Heather came like ready to admit to everything, which was, I don't know who, whoever like coached her beforehand. You know, and I guess Terry had the same type of stroke that Kim Zolciak had, by the way. Yeah, whatever the thing is, as she explained. Yeah, like that's so, interesting. Yeah, basically, long story short, it's like if you have a blood clot in your leg, for example, because this happens quite often and it dissipates through your body. But um, if it travels up and it goes up to your heart and you happen to have a hole in your heart and it dissolves and it travels to your brain, it can cause a stroke. And then obviously she's like, oh, my God, but the surgeon pay. We need him to still be able to do plastic surgery. So it was the size of a period at the end of the sen- of a sentence. That's that's how that's how small the stroke was. But thank yeah. God she was there with him. He would have died it had it been at the wrong time. Here's what I don't understand. What was that like the day that she was running down the street chasing Terry Dubrow and not being allowed in the Uber while it was driving away while she's j- jingling the the car handle? I want I want that footage. Yeah. That's hard to imagine. First of all, why were you at the Ivy, Heather? No one's going there for fucking salad. I will say they do have a banging, they have banging crab cakes and they have a banging ass Caesar salad with chicken. I love their grilled chicken Caesar. It's really expensive, but it's really fucking good. I'm so hungry all the time now. Chicken Caesar salad. I am too. I've been working out like a maniac. That's why I we I like th- tomorrow we have a fucking personal training session. I like I'm starving. I want to eat a whole goddamn loaf of bread. Oh, don't you dare bring up bread in my presence. Oh my god! I know I haven't had real bread in so long. Keto bread is all I've been eating. We're on the FODMAP, whatever. The what? Or Jeff is. Jeff's on a FODMAP. It's like called a FODMAP where you only have certain foods from certain groups until your body basically goes into no taste, no craving for anything. And then you slowly incorporate foods back in one by one. So last week or the week before, he had to incorporate just the egg white back into his diet. And then the week, if that went well, then he could then add in the yolk. So he, now he can do a full hard boiled egg and oh, now he can, t- he'll, f- now this is the way you're supposed to be able to find out what the problematic food is that causes oh. the digestion or gastrointestinal mm-hmm. whatever issue. Mm-hmm. So because of that and the immense working out, the results are fabulous, but I am left hangry all the time lately. And I so feel like results. I'm getting none, none. What are you doing? Or I don't know. I'm not familiar with what's it called? With Celsius. Theory. Oh, Celsius. It, that's a drink. Sorry, I keep seeing people on podcasts uh, yeah. featuring that drink. Um, yeah, Orange Theory. It's like it's weights, rowing, and um, a treadmill. So like yesterday, I'm probably ran like in 20 minutes, like two miles, a little over two miles. Um, can I be honest with you? Mm. I would stop doing all that cardio shit. I used to do that all the time. You do not lose weight that way. Well, I, I normally don't, but in order to like step it up, cause I've been mostly doing weight training and like, listen, my legs, I've got the leg muscles. They're there. You can tell okay. I've been doing it. You can tell I've been doing two leg days a week, but it's like cardio is the only way to push it over the edge for me. 
I prefer like I prefer running to walking because I don't know we're we're done basically with the recap so we're you know um when I'm on the treadmill and you know how everyone's like do the 12 3 30 the 12 incline going at a, a pace of three for 30 minutes that type of like where the heart rate that you're supposed to sit at there it feels like a panic attack to me like it's it, I either need to be under that or like blasting through the roof can't take it so like no, I see what you're saying about the cardio because that's why I always did cardio a lot because it like took it over the edge so I could like right. whatever. Ever since I started doing CrossFit and we're not doing a lot of cardio, mm -hmm. at first I was like, I told our trainer, I was like, do not make me bulky. I'm not going to do it. So if, if mm -hmm. your intention is to make me one of these muscle queens with a handbag, I'm not doing it. So I want to be <laughs> lean, lean and toned. Yeah. Like whatever. So, but we do a little cardio sometimes, like on the rowing machines, like mm -hmm. we'll do them in intervals because we end up doing like a lot of weights essentially. Like, but like, I've just noticed that like the more weights I'm incorporating, like the heavier I'm lifting, mm -hmm. the more leaner I feel, Isn't that which is not what I would think would happen because I just picture the more weight you lift, the bulkier you get because you have to build that muscle to right. be able to withstand it but not yeah the whole thing it's is just made me hangry too. my problem it is, is. food but i love it but jeff does the grocery shopping and the cooking so there's nothing to have that's not cooking and it's all like stuff that i wouldn't even know how to start cooking because it's all like part of that special mm. Yeah, I'm just, I am accepting the size I'm going to be come November. I just am what I am. I'm doing my best, but hey. But you're listen. really, you're already petite. Like, what are you trying to do? I lean up, basically be the size I was before I got pregnant, which is never going to happen. <laughs> What's the size you were before you were pregnant? Are you was, trying, that's so unachievable. I was like a size two. I was tiny. And I, and here, and so I You're was, like, what, a four now? You're not um, bigger than a four. I'm stop. I'm close. Depends on the brand, but it's like, listen, if I'm buying a size four in, say, Abercrombie jeans or something, it, they are going to be tight at first for a little bit. <laughs> I got to do all the wiggle. Well, to be fair, Abercrombie makes their jeans for twelve-year-old girls that are a size I, four, not a no, woman who's new, a size four. The way Abercrombie is now is so much better. I swear. Oh, really? Um, they have a little bit more, like, wiggle room, so you're not, like, a bony yes. lacrosse player in high school that yeah. can just wear them around your hips? Correct. They are totally – they're so inclusive now. Um, yeah. So it's actually worth checking out Abercrombie. Like, their jeans fit me. They better. have great denim. Actually, you know what's funny about you saying that? Actually, I just remembered the – I wear them a lot. The I was in Marshalls one day, and I went mm. by a rack of – there was Abercrombie jeans. Um, and I only wear girls jeans because I don't like the way guys jeans fit on me. Cause I have mm -hmm. a short torso and long mm -hmm. legs and men's jeans are always cut with a long crotch. And so it yeah. always looks like dad saggy. jeans yeah, and unnecessarily saggy. So anyways, I like more of a fitted look. So I always went to even like in high school, I wore girls mm -hmm. jeans cause they fit better. Anyways, I went by a rack. These Jeans were hanging, and I was like, huh. I looked at them, then saw they were Abercrombie, but they didn't look like a typical Abercrombie jean. They looked like a jean yeah. that you would find in, like, Zara or something. It was, right. like, nice cut. Can I tell you how much I fucking love those jeans so much that I went on the website to find the same fit? Mm -hmm. They were, like, twelve ninety nine at, like, Marshall's. So stupid. So I've dumb. I've never seen Abercrombie at Marshall's. That's incredible. I see a bunch of stuff. I saw Givenchy at Marshall's uh, a couple weeks ago. There's like, they get these random hauls. Like TJ Maxx gets more of it, but yeah. Marshall sometimes will get these drops where it's like, oh, okay. Let me look over here. Oh, sorry, I was trying to take a sip of my drink. Um, yeah. Because normally in TJ Maxx is like so expensive when they do their designer stuff that I'm like, why am I, I'm not spending $1,200 on this ugly Fendi bag. <laughs> Can I be honest with you about something? The Please. amount of people that spend the money that they do on these handbags. And don't get me wrong. I love, I love to collect a nice little cute 
bag. But overall, I will tell you, especially when I worked with Bergdorf Goodman, they don't lock their stuff up. Like when you walk in, you can touch a Tom Ford bag. You can pick it up. Mm -hmm. It's not like Bloomingdale's or like any of those other, but like the amount of people that would come in that had so much fucking money that could purchase not just one bag. If they, they're, they could buy four or five, right? Cause Kathy Hilton used to call in all the time and we would help her. Cause she bought, there was a skincare brand that they carried that she was loyal to. So they we like would package stuff. Chris Jenner would call in all the time and get stuff sent to her because Bergdorf's was big on ship shipping things complimentary. Yeah. So but when you wow. see what these rich women do, they literally come and these housewives are doing it too. Yeah. They come into these stores not to buy. <clears throat> no. They're coming to look and thoroughly inspect the bag that they're going to go buy on the black market and they yep. want to make sure that they got the details right. The reason why I know that is because there was three personal shoppers in the store that would tell us all the time that these women had their little connects in Manhattan or whoever and they got the shit and they would come back into Bergdorf's with these bags and people would be like, wow. And they would be, they're the ones laughing because they're like, I'm not spending $6,000 on this Tom Ford bag. I can get it for 500 right. from I Gary. Mean, how do you think they're so rich? They That's what my dad used rich. to say. That's what my dad used to say. He's like, how do you think rich people are rich? They don't go spending it all on all these things that everyone wants. But I want it. But I want it so bad. <laughs> they do they do that's one thing that's the odd thing right the more written money and resources you have the less you have to use for these things that you initially wanted the money for in the first place <laughs> so you could actually go buy a fucking bag now they're like here it's like i mean listen i would take it for free no matter what but my god a thousand percent but i'm not going to spend at this rate also with like chanel i tell people all the time if it's an after 2008 chanel don't buy it hmm why is that? The yeah. hardware complete because they changed the hardware. It's like brass coated. It's not the same. They have a lot of issues with the like hardware, uh, especially with the flat bag. Um, I can't tell you how many women would come in and want to throw their flat bag and be like, I don't want another flat. Bag. Like, I'm sick of this. Like, I'm going to wow. go buy a pre owned old vintage flat where the, the, the hardware is actually like not. Honestly, they, they're skimming these, these, they're smart. They're smart. That's all I'm going to say. They, I believe this is a conspiracy theory. Ooh. Um, when I was working in New York, I met a few textile type people that would come in and out. They worked in the garment district. They worked in the, the furniture district, like for swatches and things. So they were very much into the textiles. And with mm -hmm. that comes a lot of customization. And so sometimes there would be like, and this, this can, you can order it anywhere, but like, you know, the canvas for Louis Vuitton print, right? The monogram canvas, that's on a roll. You can get Fendi on a roll. You can right. get, and it's from the fashion house. It's not like, fake because people get stuff customized all the time that are one of a kind mm. things with like Louis Vuitton wrapped chairs or whatever. So yeah. this guy came in and said that a lot of the people that come in and buy a lot of the textiles, like specifically canvas, like things like that are people that are creating the dupes, but also the people that create these, I'm not talking about like your run of the mill dupe where if you saw it, you're like, that's a fake bag. I'm talking like, you could walk into the same store with this bag and, they wouldn't and possibly return it if you really wanted to. That's how good it is. But the point he was making was that these are not flukes. These people worked for the company or still have ties to the company and the supplies because down to the zippers, the metals, everything gets updated within weeks. You've got a dupe out that is identical. Mm -hmm. How would they have all the details for something like that if it wasn't an inside job to some degree? Right. So that's why I feel like these companies now, these brands, they're like, they're just putting whatever on a fucking t-shirt and they're just like, oh, that's all oh. they want. They don't care. They just want to buy something that has a logo. I can tell you there is absolutely no different quality in the t-shirts that are designer 
than they're not there's zero difference they are 100 percent cotton unless it is a, is one of the t-shirts that says it has some silk woven in it that is that is going to be different yeah but the silk was woven into the tag that's what they mean by that okay <laughs> it has a, it has a heavier weight to it when it has that and it's it's very soft but like nah there's they're the exact same they feel the same as something you would get off of etsy <laughs> honest to god but i just don't understand why people don't grasp the fact that because you put all these expensive things on that automatically equates you to being fashionable or yeah. looking rich when in fact it kind of works against you in my opinion i almost feel like you look like a clown when you've ladies, got all that yes. shit on i i always have been like i've told you this before morgan stewart yes yeah, she's so yeah she's fabulous like always always she gets it right. Yeah. She doesn't overly do it. She's got the, she wear, and you know what I respect about? She'll wear the same stuff over and over again. Now, if I, if I were that type of petite like her, I, it would be easy for me to just, you know, fashion is immediately just wear a white button down with a nice pair of, you know, well-fitting jeans and throw on some slingbacks and you're good. That's but the thing But you can though. do that. You do realize. <laughs> you're, hmm? You can do that right now. I know, but like, you know, a button down shirt doesn't really look good on me because I have big shoulders. Why? And I my, I have like lined No, shoulders. stop it right now. You, that, that's like the best look. You should totally do an oversized button down then and just do like a more fitted jean. Ugh. That way it balances it out. So it's meant to look more oversized. Well, the problem is I need you to um, basically come to when, whenever I'm anywhere that i need to look nice i basically need you to just come pick out what i'm wearing <laughs> where are you staying in vegas we're staying at the Westin that's allegedly across the street from caesar's palace so i don't know the where that is in... that's allegedly right next to it so we are going to be close to each other then because i'm across the street from there and you're next to yes it. because so. i yeah it's like Something about fashion, it's just, like, changed in a way that I used to be, like, right on top of it, know exactly what's in, what's out. And then now I'm like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. I don't know if it's because of where I'm living that it's, like, so casual here. Um, people are all about, like, jeans, and you're kind of dressed up if you're wearing a flannel. <laughs> I get that. I mean, to some degree, it's not, That's like, fine. a super dressy when I say dressy, it's like I sometimes find myself dressing down or dumbing it down here because I'm like, no one's going to get this. Right. Or they're not going to appreciate it as much. They're just going to gawk and be like, oh, wow, big town. You know, that's I hate that so much. But nonetheless, yeah. Um, yeah, use me. I don't care. Like, I first of all, I the week leading up to this trip, pray for Jeff because he's going to be so inundated with so much being thrown at him he I'm already knows really facetiming a lot i am going to be flipping the fuck out the entire way through he'll be taking footage for you definitely like leading no up totally to, people want to see behind the scenes of you doing this stuff so i mean this I'm is going to be, be the first time now we're going to be definitely um making a lot of content because we're gonna have to make the most of it yeah i mean i don't know we have to treat this like a housewives trip. We have to pack like a housewives trip. We have to go like it's a housewives trip. Dinners, cocktails. We're gonna go to Vanderpump. Yeah, Paris. And Paris. like relive the night, Lala. Disco pussy. And yeah, disco pussy. Oh my god. Who should we go to disco pussy? I mean, listen, you, we're not going to the Bravos because I'm not paying a thousand dollars for a watch what happens live ticket thank you very much um love would love to be there but um yeah so we could totally go to disco pussy that night i thank god for things like afterpay because <laughs> i'm hitting zara this weekend and everything else is gonna be afterpay shit because <laughs> mama still needs to get botox <laughs> i haven't had it in over a year so Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, I, I'm doing that too. I've con like completely detox on all the like filler mm -hmm. and Botox. So I am going to be, it's either going to work beautifully or I'm going to show up and look like a scarecrow. Um, you and me both, honey. <laughs> just, you know, 
I just have a feel. I'm gonna need to get it done like a couple weeks before though, because I don't want to get on a plane after getting Botox or something. Someone's like something will freeze and snap inside my face. I think as long as it's not within 24 hours of doing anything crazy, you're good. You're good. So they fit me in. Mm-hmm. Um, go make that appointment right now if you need to get in. Um, well, I'll, I'll, do, I'll have to do it after the gym if I feel like it. I really am so hungry. I don't know how I'm going to get through this. You can do it. And I will stop um, holding you hostage here. So, Giorgio, thank you for joining me. Thank you always. for having me as always. And we'll, it's only two parts to the reunion. So I'll see you next week. Yes. And of course, then what are same we time, do? same channel. Okay. Well, what else is going to be coming on? Oh, we have a lot coming on. We have Beverly Hills. We have Miami on the same night. We have Potomac that's going to be coming. So that week's going to be just bundle up. <laughs> All right, friends, go follow Giorgio. Listen to his podcast, Giorgio Says, and leave a nice review. It always feels so good. Subscribe to the YouTube, do all the things. And um, I, again, I'll be back hopefully to the regular schedule next week. All right. Bye. Bye, guys.